Mickey Mouse is one of the most iconic characters of the 20th century, and in his nine decades of existence, his look, design, and even personality have evolved drastically through a variety of cycles, as animation styles and audience expectations have changed over time. With his visual design altering over 30 times across 90 years, some more noticeable than others, Mickey has undergone a slow yet often subtle evolution. In this video, I will trace the screen evolution of Mickey Mouse right from his first appearance in 1928 to today in 2018. To do so, we will look at the most drastic and important changes prevalent across 20 classic Mickey shorts in this edition of Explaining Disney. Despite being the fourth Mickey Mouse short to be released, Plain Crazy was the first ever to be produced. In this we see, obviously, the earliest design of Mickey Mouse. While he does wear his iconic shorts, he doesn't wear either his shoes or his gloves. His eyes are also enormous and round with big black pupils. It's not a very attractive design, it's actually kind of a little bit creepy, and likely the result of budget and time restrictions due to the independent nature of the short. There really is no wonder why this design didn't stick around for very long. In this short Mickey is a little bit naughty as well, getting up to all kinds of mischievous activities. A far cry from what the character would become in later years. The Gallopin' Gaucho was Mickey's second produced and third released. This is a very strange moment in Mickey's evolution as, for the only time ever, Mickey actually evolves halfway through the short. Mickey starts the short in his plain crazy design, but is segued into an altered form between shots after the second act when his rival Pete makes his debut appearance in a Mickey short. This does seem like a very odd and confusing thing to do, though some scholars have suggested that Mickey's appearance changes at this moment, as it's also the moment when Mickey transitions from a troublemaker to a hero, undergoing not only a personality change, but a physical one too. Steamboat Willie, while the first ever released, was the third produced and shows Mickey in his transformed state and a look which became iconic with the character. Mickey's new design gave him shoes and smaller eyes, which were now simply just black ovals. As a result of his newfound lovable personality which Walt gave to him in an effort to make him more of a role model, he even appears somewhat more happy, cheerful and heroic. Mickey still had a little bit of a naughty streak for a while, but it was definitely more playful than nasty. Though the Opry House, the fifth Mickey short, would show Mickey in his new style, which it seems Walt had settled on for a little while, he finally acquires his last iconic attribute, his classic gloves. It's understood that apart from adding a little extra charm to Mickey, the gloves were added for a technical reason, to allow audiences to be able to distinguish his hands from his body when they were against or in front of one another due to them being the same colour. It would even make them easier to draw for the animators. Walt Disney would also say that the gloves were given to Mickey in an effort to make him seem more human, emphasising his anthropomorphised attributes. In his ninth short appearance, The Carnival Kid, Mickey altered slightly yet again, but regardless of how slight, it would become his most iconic classic look known as Pie Eye Mickey. This is a reference to the small white triangle that was added to Mickey's pupils, making them each look like a pie with a slice taken out of them. The pie eye design was common in animation of the 1920s and 1930s and meant to depict light reflection, which wasn't really possible in any other way until the introduction of colour animation. Pie eyes also helped to add a new life and expression to cartoon characters and definitely gave Mickey a more emotive look. While Mickey would be depicted on and off with pie eyes across 30 more shorts until 1932, this would remain his most recognisable appearance as he was depicted in this form in daily comic strips until 1939. In this short Mickey would also gain eyebrows, which too would come and go over the next handful of shorts. Carnival Kid is also notable for being the first short in which Mickey Mouse speaks, with a vocal performance provided by Walt Disney himself. Hot dog! Hot dog! By the mid-1930s, Mickey had well and truly lost his pie eyes and eyebrows, and in the band concert, his 76th short, appeared in colour for the very first time. Here he would not appear in his regular uniform though, with artists opting for a now iconic band leader costume. Later that same year, however, Mickey would appear in his traditional uniform in colour for the very first time in his 79th short, Mickey's Garden where his gloves were revealed to be yellow. In this short, it's also worth mentioning that the buttons on Mickey's shorts would change from circular to oval shaped, which is how they would eternally remain thereafter. Pluto's Judgment Day debuted a radically redesigned Mickey, though one not incredibly noticeable on first glance. 
Previously sporting a symmetrical circular design, Mickey was redesigned with an asymmetrical pear-shaped body in what was quite possibly his most revolutionary and important design to date. This change in body shape would make Mickey more flexible and allow animators to employ squash and stretch animation techniques, which could allow him to move more freely and realistically as if he had a real weight and could abide by the rules of gravity. Animators noted that by employing these techniques, Mickey could be drawn in poses and attitudes he couldn't be previously, adding a whole new life, personality and realism to the cartoon character. By the mid-1930s, Mickey's design was constantly changing in very subtle ways. By this stage, Mickey's face had taken on a pinkish flesh tone, doing away with the plain white face that had remained during the transition from black and white to colour shorts. However, on the contrary, as of moving day, Mickey's gloves changed from a yellow colour to a plain white. Both are changes that would remain in the character design forevermore. By the late 1930s, animator Fred Moore, who was the studio's Mickey specialist, suggested to Walt Disney that Mickey needed yet another modernised redesign. Pleased with Moore's proposed ideas, Walt agreed to allow Mickey to undergo yet another significant evolution, which was debuted in Mickey's Surprise Party. Moore, who was also the artist who brought the squash and stretch design to Mickey, now designed Mickey in yet another more expressive and more human way. This Mickey retained Moore's pear-shaped body design, but also gave him a larger, more pronounced Pronounced head and gave him more realistic eyes, once again giving Mickey white eyes with black pupils. Mickey not only looked more human, but he also looked cuter and more attractive to audiences. This design would actually first appear in the Mickey comic strips, but would then debut on the screen in Mickey's surprise party. Although the pointer, which premiered five months later, is often erroneously attributed as the short which debuted the style. While Mickey's Surprise Party would debut the style on the screen, the Sorcerer's Apprentice segment in Fantasia would popularise Mickey's new look amongst audiences who fell in love with it immediately. Though the film wasn't an enormous success with audiences, this segment did help cement it as the standard for Mickey's design going forward. To this day, Moore's design has been the standard for Mickey's modern design. Pluto's party debuted Mickey's most stylized design in his original run of classic shorts. With a more angular body, his head was transformed into a more pear-shaped design, and he was once again given eyebrows to give him that extra level of expression. This would also become the face used on the Mickey Mouse Club logo, and become the most commonly presented design of Mickey in the 1950s. Throughout the 50s, Mickey would also, strangely, appear in everyday clothes. This approach was very much in line with 1950s animation, but I've always found it to be very strange and almost disconcerting. Mickey's initial run of shorts would end with number 130, The Simple Things in 1953. In the 1980s and 1990s, Mickey would make his return to theatrical animation in a series of shorts including Mickey's Christmas Carol, The Prince and the Pauper, and Runaway Brain. And once again, he reverted to his iconic 1940s Fred Moore style, once again solidifying the design as the standard Mickey style. This style would also carry over onto the Mickey Mouse Works television series in the late 90s, early 2000s, and would additionally influence later CG appearances of Mickey in 3D animated productions such as Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. However, in 2013, Mickey appeared in 3D theatrical short Get a Horse, in a style inspired by his classic 1929 design. The short begins as an homage to late 1920s Mickey cartoons, complete with original Walt Disney dialogue, but then Mickey transitions into the third dimension as he crosses the fourth wall and appears in 3D for the very first time. Unfortunately, the 2D version of this short is the most commonly distributed version, and the 3D version can only be found on the frozen 3D Blu-ray from Europe and Asia. I've always thought that the 2D version loses a little bit of the charm of this short. In keeping with Get A Horse, Mickey's most recent outing have been a series of Paul Rudish Disney Channel and web shorts, which once again return to the classic Mickey Mouse title and depict Mickey with highly stylized designs inspired by the 1929 pie eye look. As the current iteration of Mickey Mouse on the screen, Mickey has come full circle. And as with everything, what's old is new again. And with that, it's over to you guys out there. I want to know what is your favourite Mickey Mouse appearance over the last 90 years. Fire away in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. 
If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, you like what you've seen, you'd like to see more like this in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen right now, and also hit that like button down below if you're feeling extra generous. Also, don't forget to check out my many social media accounts, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.